In this module, we discuss electron transport, the stage in aerobic organisms that's coupled to making most of the ATP in respiration. In an earlier presentation, we saw that after glycolysis and two turns of the Krebs cycle in aerobic organisms, the free energy that was once in glucose is in 10 NADHs, 2 FADH2s, and 4 ATPs. So in this module, we'll see how the free energy in the reduced electron carriers is released during electron transport and captured in a gradient of protons. In a later module, we'll see how relief of this proton gradient is coupled to ATP synthesis by oxidative phosphorylation. First, a reminder about redox reactions. In this generic reaction, electrons are being transferred as part of hydrogen molecules, a characteristic of many biochemical redox reactions. The reduced and oxidized forms of the same molecule are called a redox pair. From the equilibrium arrows, you can see that this reaction is exergonic. So it would have a negative standard free energy change, a negative delta G0, releasing free energy. How about this real reaction? Can you identify the redox pairs here? They are pyruvate and lactate, and NAD plus and NADH. Pyruvate and lactate are simply the oxidized and reduced forms of the same molecule, as are NAD plus and NADH. The transfer of electrons between molecules in redox reactions is a lot like the flow of electrons in an electric circuit. Take this simple battery, for instance. By convention, the plus button, or the plus end, is the anode, and the flat end of the battery is the cathode. When the circuit shown here is closed, electrons flow from the cathode to the anode. This is because the anode contains chemicals with a higher potential to be reduced than the chemicals at the cathodal end of the battery. The chemical reaction in the battery is spontaneous, releasing free energy. The electron transport system, then, is a series of molecules in the crystal membrane of the mitochondrion that can accept and then donate electrons. The electrons flow from NADH and FADH2 down this series of redox molecules because each subsequent component has a higher potential to be reduced than the one before it. Hence, the whole of electron transport releases free energy when the reduced electron carriers produced in glycolysis and the Krebs cycle are oxidized. This slide illustrates the redox components of the electron transport system, or ETS for short. NADH from the Krebs cycle is oxidized by a dehydrogenase enzyme containing FMN, that's flavin mononucleotide, another B vitamin derived electron carrier. From there, its pair of electrons is passed as a hydride ion from component to component down the electron transport system until it joins with protons to reduce molecular oxygen to make water at the end of the chain. Likewise, FADH2 from the Krebs cycle is oxidized by the electron transport system, though its electron pair is accepted further down the chain by coenzyme Q, which is also called ubiquinone. Finally, NADH formed in the cytoplasm during glycolysis is also oxidized in the electron transport system. Since NADH can't cross the mitochondrial membranes to get into the matrix, chemical shuttles that can cross these membranes accept electrons from cytoplasmic NADH and deliver them to components of the electron transport system. So the entire electron transport system is an energetically favorable pathway as shown here. As I noted, electrons are passed to components with higher and higher potential to be reduced, shown on the left. Well, the flow of electrons can be measured. Current is a measure of how many electrons are flowing, and voltage is a measure of the potential electrical energy of the electron flow. We can measure reduction potential. When we do this under standard conditions, the standard conditions that we would use to determine equilibrium constants and standard free energy changes, we will measure the standard reduction potential, or SRP, of a reaction. And this has been done for many of the reactions, if not all of them, in the electron transport system. 